As someone who uses timeline-based apps like Logic Pro 10 and Final Cut Pro 10 on a regular basis, horizontal display real estate is incredibly important. When it comes to editing video and audio, obviously the bigger the monitor, the better, but a real difference can be felt when you have more room to move about the timeline. And what about those widescreen movies that feature letterboxing on a 16x9 display? Well, having a 21x9 display can make the viewing experience a lot better without needing to crop the image. Does LG's ultra-wide display make a true difference in my workflow? Let's find out. Before I even received this monitor, I knew that I would have to overcome at least one major issue if I was going to be able to use it in the long term. That issue, of course, revolves around resolution. As someone who is accustomed to retina high DPI displays, transitioning back to a lesser resolution was going to present the biggest challenge by far. That's what makes 4K monitors and to an even greater degree 5K monitors so desirable. At 3440 by 1440, the LG Ultra Wide display doesn't really have that luxury. Going from retina to non-retina can be taxing on the eyes for sure, especially when reading lots of text. I really wanted to make it work so I persevered through a little bit of eye strain, and after about a week or so of constant usage, my eyes began to get used to reading text that was just a tad bit blurry when compared to my MacBook Pro. So if you can't have retina with this monitor, then why consider it? Well, having 3,440 pixels of horizontal resolution means that you can fit multiple browser windows side by side with these, and more importantly, it means that you can fit some incredibly long Final Cut Pro 10 timelines on a single screen. For those of you who work with non-linear editing apps, you'll immediately recognize the benefit of such a setup. In movies, those extra wide anamorphic aspect ratio movies are going to look incredible on your 21 by 9 monitor without those ugly bars at the top and bottom of the picture. And then there's the curve. Curved displays may seem like marketing gimmicks, and for things like televisions where you're sitting five or more feet away from the screen, I tend to agree. But for a monitor that's literally no more than a couple of feet away from your face, having a curved display makes for a more immersive experience. If you're a Mac user, things get even better. This monitor can work as a dock via its Thunderbolt connectivity and its USB uplink connectivity. Sadly, there's no SD card slot on this display, which in my opinion is an egregious omission. Creatives who shoot video and photos use SD cards all day long, and it's ridiculous that a monitor that targets creatives lacks this option. Sound-wise, the monitor is just passable, but it's the typical anemic sound that you expect from televisions and displays these days. You're definitely going to want to invest in a set of speakers speakers that can properly handle the job. The stand for the display easily snaps onto the back of the monitor and provides it with an adequate amount of stability. While on the stand, the monitor can tilt forward and backwards negative 5 degrees to 15 degrees. The stand also allows you to adjust its screen height up to 110 millimeters. The monitor doesn't rotate from side to side, but that might not be as big of an issue given its curve. I wasn't very impressed with the stand or the overall build quality of this display. Now, don't get me wrong. it's adequate, it's nice, but plastic is definitely the material of choice here, which is kind of weak for a display that costs over 1K. I also noticed some small gaps on the side of the display where the front meets the rear panel, which is owed to the abundance of plastic used on this monitor. LG's monitor uses one of those single input joystick deals on the bottom of the display to control power, volume, and all the other controls and options found on the OSD. The OSD features the typical options that you generally associate with the display. There's input settings for changing the current input, and quick settings for quickly adjusting crucial features like brightness and contrast. You'll also find more advanced features like PBP mode, which allows you to display two sources of input on the display in a simultaneous side-by-side -side setup. This allows you to, for instance, display an Apple TV on one side and your Mac on the other side at the same time. There are many additional options available for this display, including LG's own screen control app. This is an app that allows you to designate areas of the monitor for different apps. The LG 34UC98 ultrawide display is an awesome display when used with the right applications. For using timeline-based audio and video editing applications, it truly excels and can make editing easier. Anamorphic widescreen movies fill the entire display and look downright incredible. If either of those use cases fit your needs, then I can easily recommend LG's ultrawide offering. 
With all that said, this monitor isn't going to work properly with high DPI modes. I have to be honest and say that some of you are not going to be able to handle going back to a non-retina display, even if it means a better experience from a real estate perspective. Surprisingly, however, after about a week or so of usage, my eyes did begin to adjust, albeit slowly, and I was able to work just fine without the crispness afforded by a display with high DPI mode. If you can live with the non-retina screen, the build quality, the lack of an SD card reader, and of course the price, then the LG 34 UC98 Ultra Wide display is something you should consider. By the way, there's also a cheaper version of the display featuring a black exterior that lacks the Thunderbolt connectivity. If you're not a Thunderbolt user, then this model can actually save you a few dollars yet still deliver the awesome viewing experience afforded by such a wide screen. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.